It's time for my September wrap up. Let's talk about all the books I read this month and my favorite part, all the statistics of what I read this month. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we are gonna be doing my September wrap up. I had a funny reading month in September, which we'll get into. I had probably the most five stars I've ever had in a month, but I also spent a whole week of the month reading a hundred pages of something I eventually DNF'd. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to oh, oh, are you all right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, darling. Okay, so yeah. And then after that, it took me a long time to read books, but a lot of my five stars were books that I read, not in vlogs. So I think editing my vlogs and sitting through them, I was like, this bitch hasn't had a good reading month. But when I actually looked back, I did. It was just books I didn't really talk to you about. So we're gonna talk about all of them in this video. We're gonna do all my reading statistics. But first, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video which is Boxy. So I've spoken about Boxy a few times on my channel. I really really love their service. They are a Japanese snack box subscription. Each month has a theme. I have- oh! <laughs> I have again got the Kansai Autumn box, which you do not know how happy I am about this because this is the box I had the last sponsorship I did with them. And I have again got these lemon mini pies, which are so good. I'd finish them all and I love them. Like if I could have a constant supply of these, I would be a happy woman. I could die happy if I could just have a constant supply of these. They're so tasty. So Boxy works with local artisanal makers, local chefs, local family run businesses, and they have this culture guide where you can see where all the different snacks in the box came from, which I think is really cool. You get so many. I don't think you can understand how much there is in this box. You get so many snacks in each box. It's filled to the brim with snacks. It's not like when I first got it, I thought it would be like five snacks, but it's like 10 or more different things that you get. So yeah, you can use my code MEGAWITHBOOKS10 for 10% off your Japanese snack box subscription. That can be up to like $47, so you can get a really good amount of money off your subscription if you want. And I just I just think it's such a cool snack box. You get so much in it. I would really recommend giving Boxy a go. Oh. Okay, so let's talk about the books I read in September. In terms of some of my initial stats, I read 11 books, right? Yes. <laughs> that was fucking scary. My heart's going pitter patter, pitter patter. Which is an okay number. I think I've been reading like 13 or 12 the past couple months. It would have been around that if I hadn't spent a week on something I eventually DNF'd and haven't counted towards this. I read a total of 3,297 pages. That works out at around 109 pages per day, which I always want to keep that above 100 if I can. That's kind of my general goal is averaging over 100 pages a day um, and an average book length of 300 pages. Now my average rating this month was 4.18 which is the second highest average rating I've had in a month so far this year. Usually I'm kind of like in maybe like 3.6 average rating but yeah 4.18 but I didn't feel like at the end of the month like I'd had a good reading month but I had but like I said mostly books that I hadn't read in blogs were the ones that I was giving five stars. In terms of my statistics I had five five stars two four stars two 3.5 stars and two three stars so nothing under a three star so actually nothing bad nothing I didn't enjoy but I think I had quite a few three and 3.5 stars which had been like you know, books I thought I was gonna absolutely adore so I think I felt a little bit disappointed by that. I'm not fuming I'm like I'm a little bit bo yeah, no, I'm bothered. I'm bothered. In terms of genre, I read one contemporary, four fantasy, one graphic novel, one historical, one mystery, one non-fiction, one romance, and one thriller. So a real mix of genres this month. I was all fu I was fucking all over the place. <laughs> I read a bit of everything this month. Sorry, by the way, if my voice is a bit funny. I like almost choked to death last night. <laughs> That's quite dramatic. I just swallowed and suddenly I couldn't breathe and I was coughing. So if my voice is a bit funny and I'm kind of like sounding a bit tentative in my voice, that's why. Finally, reading a lot of fantasy again. Finally, fantasy is my most read genre again. I had not really been reading fantasy much the past couple months and I'm glad to see it back in there because I do love my fantasy. I read six adult, one middle grade and four YA. So I've pretty much always got a 50-50 split between adult, 
and YA. But I think I am starting to lean a little bit more towards adult. I mean, look at me. She's, She's growing. growing. She's growing. <laughs> Some YA, I was talking about this in my most recent vlog and Nikki commented and spoke about how, I was speaking about how sometimes YA reads younger than you expect and how that throws you off and throws off how much I enjoy it. Nikki said something which like, perf like perfectly encapsulated what the problem was. It wasn't that I never want to read YA that reads as young, it's when you don't expect it. And you know, she said like middle grade never has that problem. And again, I never have that problem with middle grade where I'm like, huh, this reads young because you know it's going to read young, you know what you're expecting. Whereas YA is this big, broad kind of age category. And sometimes you think you're going to go into something that's going to be older YA and it's actually more younger YA. And it's that disconnect that leaves me disappointed sometimes. In terms of where I acquired the books, six books were part of a series and five were standalones. We know my long running debacle with series. <laughs> I need to start trying to get through them and actually read the series that I am, you know, part way through and stop starting new ones. The feeling I get starting a new series. I am not addicted to them. I am in love with them. In my series spreadsheet, most of the series I'm like part way through are series that I, uh, I've just read the first book. <laughs> In terms of author status, two were debuts, five were authors I'd read before, and four authors were new to me. So I feel like that's a good mix. I do like to read authors I've read before because I know I enjoy them. Let's talk about the books that I read this month. I'm going to talk to you in depth about all the ones that I read outside of reading vlogs first. There's four of them. Firstly, this was on my TBR Cluedo TBR for the month. I read The Bungalow Mystery by Nancy. Bye, Nancy Drew. <laughs> I enjoyed this, but I gave it three stars. It wasn't my favourite that I've read in the series. I mean, I read it in one evening, like, sitting around chatting to my family. It wasn't the most, like, invested reading experience. I love Nancy Drew. I do have this, like, lifelong ad adoration of Nancy Drew, particularly from the Nancy Drew games, and now I'm starting to read the books. I feel like I'm not in control of my voice today. Like, genuinely, I almost died. <laughs> I'm sorry if it, I sound a bit weird with what I'm saying. This one is about Nancy meets this girl who, whose mother has recently died and she's being taken in by these kind of like adoptees almost that her mother supposedly knew back in the day and they seem a bit dodgy is essentially the premise here. Basically, if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll know that my problem is I love the audiobooks for this original Nancy Drew series. They have loads of music throughout, like not just like at the beginning, at the end, like when the author is narrating, there's music to fit the tension in the scene. There's sound effects. It sounds old timey and stuff, but you literally can't get them anywhere. <laughs> is miffing me off somewhat. <laughs> like they've, they've gone from the internet. You can't get them anywhere. Someone actually DM'd me and had found a place, uh, an audiobook service that you can get it in the UK, but they are a charity that is specifically for people who can't read physically and so need to rely on audiobooks and it's only really, you know, um, supposed to be available to them. So at first when I saw it, I was like, yes, I have the audiobook. And then I looked more into it and it's not really something that I can take advantage of you know, I would want to. So the audiobooks are out there. That is the most annoying thing for me, but I can't, I can't find a way to get to them. Um, they used to be on Scribd, which is where I started listening to this series and then they've just wiped themselves from the earth. But I did enjoy it. It's a fun mystery. It's easy to read. It kind of gets the numbers up for the month. And I love a bit of Nancy Drew, but I feel like this would have definitely been a four star if I had the audiobook. Then um, let's talk about the other physical book I read this month. I reread Heartstopper, volume one. Yes! <laughs> yes! If you know, this is one of my favorite graphic novel series in the world, one of my favourite series in the world. I fucking adore them. I love Nick and Charlie more than anything in the world. A patron asked me to reread this, Anna asked me to reread this for their... My Raw tier patrons get a personalised video a month and this is what Anna chose um, to have as her personalised video, me rereading Heartstopper and <laughs> vlogging it. I loved this because I loved seeing where their relationship began again. I think when you get so into the other books in the series, you forget 
the kind of awkwardness and the tentativeness that works so well in this first graphic novel. So that was my favourite thing, is kind of seeing them falling in love with each other, because I think that's one of the most magical parts of a young relationship, is where you're both trying to figure each other out and trying to figure out if you both like each other, and it's just so sweet. I just love them with my whole heart. You've heard me speak about it a hundred times, but I did reread this and I loved it. And then I read two audiobooks this month, which I gave five stars. So first was Other Words for High, by Jasmine Waga. This is a really short audiobook. It's only, I think it's like four hours long. It's really, really short. We're following this girl as she has to move from Syria to the US. And it's about her finding her footing in the US and learning to make it home with her, her, you know, her family here that she's moved with, but also not forgetting the home that she has come from in Syria. It's told in verse. And I listened to the audiobook and it was just beautiful. Like I... I actually almost cried listening to this audiobook. It's so poignant and beautifully written. I think authors who write in verse are just gods who walk among us. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping. I feel the same way about Dean Atta and Elizabeth Atavedo. The way that they manage to communicate such powerful feelings and emotions in such little words is incredible. Like, I actually don't know how they do it. Um, so I would really, really recommend this as a quick audiobook. It's gorgeously written. She goes on this such a beautiful journey of, of learning more about herself and learning more about who she can be and finding herself whilst also not forgetting the home that she loves. I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And then the other audiobook that I read uh, <laughs> was Stephen Fry's Edwardian Secrets. Now, I don't fucking care that on the Goodreads, the Goodreads page for this book, the author's name is literally not a book. <laughs> not a book. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Goodreads won't even let me rate this book. They won't let me rate it, but I'm counting it as a book. It's on Audible. I spent my time listening to it. I enjoyed it. I want to talk to you about it. There is literally no difference between this and a non-fiction book. There isn't. So we're going to call it a book. I don't give a fuck if you want to call it a podcast series or some shit like that. I'm calling it a book. And boy, did I cheat like a mug. <laughs> Boy, did I cheat like mug. So this is the second in this series that Stephen Fry does over on Audible. The first is Victorian Secrets, which we know I'm a Victorian hoe. I fucking live for that shit. But this is the Edwardian one, and I still loved it. I gave it five stars. These are a production. They've got that Audible money. They've got that Stephen Fry top bill Edwardian money. Sound effects, actors, scenes. Oh, whoa, wow. <laughs> it's so good, and it just takes you through part of Edwardian history that you probably wouldn't have known about otherwise. I just fucking love it. I'm obsessed. I can't wait for when they do more of these. I might even go back and re-listen to the Victorian one. They always make an effort as well in this series to talk about, you know, people of colour who lived at these time periods, LGBT people who live in these time periods. So I really appreciate that. And it's just fascinating learning about these time periods in history, which we know so, so well. But aspects of that history which we literally know nothing about and have kind of been forgotten. And then all the other books I have read in depth this month in reading vlogs. I always say I'm gonna try, oh my god my voice, I'm so sorry. I always say I'm gonna try and not speak about these books in depth for too long in this video because then the video is just way too long. You've literally heard me speak about them in depth. I'm really gonna try and do it this month. I'm really gonna try, especially because I can barely speak today. The first three I read in another episode of Booktube Twin Test, this time with Riley Marie, my actual Booktube twin, because <laughs> everyone says we look alike. She recommended me three of her favourite books and I fucking read them, didn't I? I fucking read them. <laughs> Take a hint, Danny Brown. I enjoyed this. I gave it 3.5 stars. I didn't love it as much as Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which I think I gave four stars. I think the romance was hotter in this. Like the romantic scenes, the sex scenes, I preferred. They were better. But I didn't love the plot as much. I feel like towards the end, the plot aspects of it started to fall apart for me. But uh, Tally Hibbert is an icon, a legend. I can't wait to read At Your Age, Eve Brown, which is the last in this um, series of the Brown 
ancestors and their romances. I'm glad Riley got me to read it because I've been wanting to read this kind of around this time of the year. I think I'm just going to read whatever Talia Hibbert like kind of puts out in this kind of field next. I'm just going to continue reading her stuff. Then I read A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a story of Dracula's brides and it has polyamorous rep in it but it's also got very much centering on abuse and abuse in relationships and the, the difficulty in recognizing that you're in an abusive relationship when you adore the person who you're in a relationship with. I thought this was beautifully written, so beautifully written. Like some of the most gorgeous prose I have read this whole year. I thought the way that examined abusive relationships and love and it's kind of almost taboo to talk about, but this book very much centers on realizing that that person can think that they love you and can think that they're doing what's best for you but it can you know it's so twisted and they they don't but they think they do and just the whole dynamics of that was very interesting and I loved also the different relationships that all of Dracula's partners had in this kind of polyamorous relationship and the different dynamics that they had just for me the thing that kind of let it down was that it felt a bit predictable I feel like you kind of know where the book's going at the start she's writing a letter to Dracula talking about why she killed him and like for me there wasn't if you're gonna tell me at the start where the book is gonna end there needs to be twists so that what I how I thought it was gonna end isn't actually how it ended and that didn't really happen for me so that was why it was a four star and then one of my favorite books I've read this month a five star read was They Never Learn by Lane Fargo I absolutely adored this this is a thriller about this uh, professor at this school who kills shitty men we fucking love to see it she's a feminist icon <laughs> She's a feminist icon. And now the school is kind of turning a bit wise to it. There's, they're kind of realizing some shit is going on. And there's also another storyline of a student joining the campus in this kind of misogynistic environment and having to navigate it. This book, I have not read a thriller this fucking fast, this quickly in so long. You could not pry this book out of my hand. I was just captivated by it. It's so well paced. You're literally just flying through it. You have to know what happens. But I just loved this. I can't wait to read more of Lane Fargo stuff I would really recommend picking it up I thought it was such a good look at you know toxic masculinity I love I love thrillers that get revenge I love angry women I love rightfully angry women who get their fucking revenge that is a niche I really enjoy listen these men deserved it he deserved it man and I just thought there were so many layers to it. I loved it. I think this is quite good for like dark academia spooky season. That might be something you'd enjoy. And wow, what a great thriller. One of, actually maybe one of my favorite books I've read this year. Then I participated in the magical readathon and I read two books for this vlog. One was The Spirit Engineer by AJ West. This is an arc I very kindly received from the publisher. In this, we're following William, who is a scientist who gets wrapped up in this spiritualism world and he kind Kind of endeavors to try and prove that ghosts are real and spiritualists are real and it's a very interesting book because William isn't a very likable character he's kind of an anti-hero but I thought it's really spooky it writes in a way that writes like the time period and it also had some like famous characters from history in it which I love when books do that it was just a really solid read for me I gave it four stars it's perfect for spooky season and it, it was a book that really made me think it's a very clever book it's a very intelligent book so I don't think sometimes with like spooky horror ghosty books you kind of go into it thinking it's just going to be like a fun rompy ride that you can fly through this is more of a book that you think about and you ponder upon and then another five star book that I absolutely adored was Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and Maguire this is the sixth in the Wayward Children series but you can start here if you want in this we're following a girl who loves horses she ends up in this world of centaurs the found family in this book was just so incredible to me the way that this family of centaurs <laughs> wrapped around this girl in this magical world was amazing these books are so short these Wayward Children series where these kids go into these portal worlds that are perfect for them they're so short that they kind of feel like a dream they're so magical and vivid and detailed but you're you're only there for a second that it feels like a dream and I just love it this series I feel like has got to the point where I am just gonna give each of the books five stars from here on out like I generally I generally can't see myself rating them any less I do already have the arc for the next one which comes out I think early next year I don't know when I'm gonna read it I am kind of saving it 
it, but um, if you just want some beautiful, immersive, magical, encapsulating fantasy, please pick up this series. And you can't, you can start here if you want, but I do really like the actual first book as well, which is Every Heart a Doorway. And then I read three books for a video I just posted called Booktube Rewind, where I went back and I watched about 40 September wrap ups from last year and I read the most popular books from them. So this video has literally just come out, we're literally just gonna speak about these books for like two seconds because if you watch that video you've literally just heard me speak about them. Jade City by Fonda Lee, I gave this 3.5 stars, this is a mafia family fantasy where Jade is the power these people have. This book, basically all you need to know about my opinion of it is I fucking loved everything that the people who give it five stars loved. I agree with literally every five star review, something just didn't click for me. Um, that doesn't make no sense. And it didn't necessarily keep me on my toes. I wasn't like devouring the book, but I loved the family dynamics in this. I loved the detailed politics. I loved the fantasy. I loved the tension. So I loved everything about it, but I gave it a 3.5 because something about it just didn't click for me. Then I read Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas and I gave this three stars. It was a little bit disappointing for me. The big reveal at the end, the villain reveal was very, very disappointing for me. I feel like it was, a super obvious like I called it because it really was the only person it could have been but it also wasn't set up in a way I enjoyed and this was also what I was talking about with like I thought this would be more older YA and it was younger YA and because this book is about this boy and this ghost and him trying to uh, help the ghost go into the afterlife. I never allowed myself to become attached to their relationship and their romance because I, I, you know, it was temporary. Like, they're only gonna be together for like a day. So I never let myself, in my head, become attached and believe that this was something that could exist <laughs> by the end of the book. So it was disappointing for me. I really enjoyed all the, you know, the trans rep, the discussions around community and family and acceptance. I thought that was all amazing, but the actual, like plotting of it didn't work for me. And I'm sad because I really wanted to love it. Let me know what you read in September, how your reading month was. I would love to know. If you got to the end of this video, comment a ghost emoji, A for the spirit engineer and B because we're getting into spooky fucking season. I'm so excited. So yeah, comment a ghost emoji down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.